This really throws a damper in today's YouTube video. It's raining all day, literally. All right, now that it has stopped raining, let's try to get a video from Onyx. He's been outside for a couple days. Kind of dirty, but still looks pretty good. You know guys, I hope Onyx's battery is good. Cause I haven't drove him in like a week and the battery was getting kind of weak. Huh. Gage just turned on, fuel pumps on. It is a little weak. There we go. All right, so part of this video, I'm gonna need a vacuum gauge for, so I'm running the AutoZone right now. I don't have a vacuum gauge. So I gotta go pick one up, it's like 20, 28 bucks or something like that. But once I get that picked up, I'll pick the video back up and we'll probably be at the shop by then. So we'll see you in the next clip. All right guys, so we're in the shop now and uh, I just had to go buy Advanced and pick up one of these little Innova little vacuum pressure gauge. It's just vacuum and literally just, I guess, boost pressure. But got a little vacuum gauge and I'll show you what that's for here in just a minute. But if you couldn't tell by the title and thumbnail of this video, today we're gonna be talking about carburetor tuning versus EFI tuning and kind of what the differences are. And there's, I mean, pretty big differences. Carburetor is more mechanically done. Flathead screwdrivers, eight millimeter wrenches. So what I'm gonna show you guys today is I'm gonna take my carburetor and adjust it plumb out of, you know, tune, take and make it to where it won't even probably start. It may start, but it definitely won't idle. And I'll show you guys how to get your carburetors back to base, kind of like base tuning settings from the factory whenever they send you the carb. So without further ado, let's get into it and show you how to tune a carburetor. You want to first start off by opening the hood. And that's step one. I'm just kidding guys, I'm not gonna be doing that the whole time. What if I talk like that the whole video? Just like an old school redneck. Probably be a pretty good video. Anyways, all right. So, basically on a carburetor, how you sort of base tune it out, or how they base tune it from the factory, they pretty much send it to you oh, uh, with the air bleeds one to one and a half turns out on the primary and the secondary, and the idle screw one turn in, one to one and a half turns in. And let me show you what I'm talking about right now. So to do your idle air mixture screws on a carburetor, it's these little screws right here. And this is on a Holly style carburetor. This is a Demon, but a Demon and a Holly are literally the exact same thing. And like I said, these little screws right here, or idle air mixture screws as they call them, I'm gonna take and just really mess it up. So let's go one full turn out. Let's go right here. Go a turn and a half out. Since this carb is a mechanical secondary style carb, it has a primary and secondary idle air screws. So let's turn that one way out. Let's turn this one way out. Let's turn the idle. Let's let's take him back the idle all the way off to where it's not even touching anything. Okay, that's not touching at all. And sorry, this is your idle screw right here. That is your idle screw. That's for setting your idle how high you want it. And it's pretty much really easy. It's all mechanically done. Like I said, tuning carbs is pretty easy. You just got pretty much a flathead, a couple of wrenches, and you can really do whatever you want. I mean, you could use the filler gauge if you need to, and I'll show you why in just a second. But since we did that, let's see if this thing will start. It may start, it may hit, but it definitely, it definitely shouldn't idle. Well, I don't know, I backed the air bleeds off, so it might, let's see, anyways. All right, you see how it's running really bad? All right, guys, can you hear how bad it's running? Just barely idling. All right, go back here to the back. That sounds really bad. It's puffing black smoke out too, like it's really rich. Okay. Yeah, it's super rich right now. It's running at almost 10 idling. Hang on, let me show you. 11, 11 -0. that's super rich. Okay, before I take and foul some plugs out, let's fix it. Let's go grab our flathead again. This is kind of like a base idle reset, sort of, but for a carb. So what you're gonna wanna do is run your idle air bleeds all the way in, so all the way in, 
that's all the way in then you're gonna go half a turn one turn I'm gonna do one turn on these instead of one and a half so run it all the way in and then let's go so that one's straight up so that's a half that's one full turn we'll leave that there go to the other side do these so let's whoop hang on there we go run that one in all the way oh wow, that one's really far out okay and then half a turn one full turn same thing for the back and then we'll go half a turn one full turn and then on the idle screw we'll run it in we'll run it in one full turn let me get it to focus here okay so this is your idle screw not touching anything right now we're gonna run it in until it touches so it's touching right as soon as I get the screw back on gosh all right that's one full turn so let's go one and a half that's one and a half. We'll do one and a half right there on the idle screw. So that's your base pretty much from where they send it to you from the factory. And let's see what that does. You can smell fuel in here really bad. It was so rich earlier. All right, and that's what I figured it would be high, a high idle. But the air fuel ratio is a lot better. 14.8, 14.6 not too bad it's dropping down okay so still a little rich even with a higher idle it's still rich so what you want to do first is mess with the idle screw get it idled down to about 900 800 a thousand rpm somewhere in that neighborhood see where your air fuels are and then go from there i know this is loud guys sorry all right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna back it off that's a quarter turn go a half a turn so that doesn't sound too bad I backed it off a half or a, yeah backed it off a half a turn now, as you can tell it's still really rich at idle but it does sound a lot better so now what you do is you take your idle air mixture screws and you get that to where your air fuel is about 14, really 14 to one or 14 oh, 14 and a half, somewhere in there at an idle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten them. I'm gonna turn them to the right, righty tighty. And I'm only gonna go quarter turns at a time. So this one's straight flat like this. I'm just gonna turn it straight up. Same thing for the back, this one's straight up. I'm gonna turn it flat. sort of idling up a little bit because I'm leaning it out. But this one's almost straight, almost flat, so we'll take and just run it half a turn, or a quarter turn, sorry, in. Same thing for this one, quarter turn in. All right, now let's see where the AFR is. All right, now let's see what happened to the AFR. Okay, that's pretty good right there. That's 14 13. It's pretty much high 13s to 14 and a half. And no, my gauge is not doing that. The camera with the light, it, I don't know why it does that. It makes the light look like it's blinking, but in real life, it's just solid numbers. So I'm gonna take and idle it down first. Another half a turn. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna give it some revs. On a carb, the reason why you want to give it some revs is to see how it returns to idle. Since everything's mechanically done, the throttle, the throttle screw and the air mixture bleeds is a big part of how it comes down back to idle. And you don't want it to drop down really quick and then start, you know, stumbling, trying to cut off and then, you know, catch back up with itself. But that was pretty good. So we're gonna see where it's at. I'm just idled it down just a tad bit more. So the idle's definitely where I want it, right there around 900, 800 RPMs, but it is a little rich. It's about 13 to one, so I'm gonna lean it out just a little bit at an idle. That's pretty good, so we'll probably leave it right there. Let me see what it looks like on the AFR gauge. It's not too bad, 14 and a half, 15. That's, that's not bad, that's pretty good. 
So that is how you get your idol. Like I said, guys, it's really not that hard, not that complicated at all. Uh, all this stuff you're definitely going to want to do when it's warm, when the car is up at operating temperature. Now I'm going to use the vacuum gauge and show you how you can get your idle if you don't have like an AFR gauge or anything like that to where your car or your engine will idle good. And what you do, you just put a vacuum gauge on it and I don't have a vacuum port on the car, which I wish I did, but I don't. So I just hooked it up to the vacuum T-bar that comes stock on these cars over here. That little vacuum T-bar right there. Anyways, so I hooked it up there. And I got the vacuum gauge here and what you want to do what you want to do is get this gauge to pull as much vacuum as possible the highest amount of vacuum is where your engine is going to idle the best so we'll see where mine's at it should be pretty close because i did it with the afr gauge and that's usually good enough all right mine is pulling about 12 inch pounds of vacuum so about the best I can get this thing to do at an idle speed is about 14 to 15 pounds of vacuum. With that being at about 14 to 15, the AFR is 14 to 15. It'll hit 13.8 sometimes, but most of the time it's right at 14. Now let's talk about power valves and how to choose the correct power valve. How you choose the correct power valve, and let me mention what a power valve is first. Okay, so I got an old Holly carburetor bowl here. and. This one actually doesn't have a power valve in it. We took it out and put it in another car because we needed it. But um, what a power valve is, is whenever this thing is on the front of the carburetor, like I'll show you right here really quick, you can see this little arm. All right, and that little arm moves. Whenever you take and open the throttle, that moves that power valve right there. And a power valve helps your off idle revving and part throttle driving and stuff like that. So how you choose the correct power valve is you take and divide your idle vacuum number which mine was like 12 and a half 13 so you take 13 and you divide it by 2 which is uh 65 three and a half or no are you stupid or something so 13 divided by 2 is six and a half so that would be a number 65 power valve and that is how you figure out the correct power valve for your holly or demon or i don't know which other brands but i know holly and demon that's how you figure out your power valve and what number power valve you need. Now, tuning the idle for an EFI car is a lot different. All you gotta do is you gotta take it to somebody who knows what they're doing, take and punch some numbers in, set some parameters, read some voltages on throttle position sensors and idle air control valves, and they'll type a number in and they'll be like, yeah, this is good. And I don't know how they do that, but it's pretty much what they do. It's a big difference tuning EFI to carbureted stuff. Carbureted stuff strictly mechanical but guys i could go into super deep detail on how to tune a carburetor since mine's actually pretty good i don't have to do anything to it as far as these squirters go but i will show you what that is all right guys i got the light as best as i can but i know it's kind of glary but what a squirter is is this thing right here and whenever you take and press the throttle and it pushes on the power valve it sprays fuel and what that fuel does is or what this squirter does is helps for uh, high RPM uh, AFR tuning. So let's say your carb is a little fat at high RPM. Uh, so what you would do is take and put a smaller squirter on it and lean it out up top. And those pretty much are only wide open throttle tuning parts right there. I mean, yeah, they do a little bit down low, but most of the time a squirter. So pretty much on a carb ready car when you floor it and you open up or you hit the power valve or the power valve squirt, the fuel through the squirters into the top of the carburetor and that's pretty much mainly whenever those engage and also on a carb you want to adjust your float levels and that's pretty much simple enough since my carburetor has sight glasses on the side i don't know if you can see but there's a there's fuel right yeah right there next to my fingernail and what you want you want the fl uh, the float or the fuel level in the carb when it's running to be right there at the very bottom of that sight glass same thing goes for the back you can't see that because it's dark but same thing goes for the back one and how you adjust that is literally you take and break the phillips head loose here and there's a nut under there and you loosen it off to raise it and then you tighten it up to lower the float level and if you have the float level too high what it'll actually do is it will push fuel out of these nozzles here and that is not what you want because that's whenever fires happen and we don't like engine fires all right guys so with all that being done i got onyx back outside we're gonna go take him for a test drive Make sure everything runs good. See how he performs still, which should be just fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> he actually might run a little bit better. 
better now. It's pretty good. Come on, USPS. Get out of my way. You guys bring me other people's mail all the time, so need to move. Oh yeah, he comes back down to idle real nice, smooth. A little bit lean right now, but what we do?